Another normal night at the office. Nothing but the sound of sorting bulk rares and draft chaff to keep me company. What in the... Secret lair. Didn't know it at the time, but I was about to dive into the deep end of Five Color Commander. Oh no. I'm the detective, investigating the decks the other planeswalkers don't play, or won't. The Reaper King. I got quite the laundry list on this guy. This legendary 6-6 Scarecrow came on the scene in 2008, originally from Shadowmoor. He's the kingpin of the Scarecrows, and while his lackeys aren't particularly dangerous themselves, he's got the ability to buff them up and destroy any permanent when another Scarecrow shows up. It's not cheap though. He has a converted mana cost of 10, but you can use each color of mana to replace two colorless mana. At his cheapest, he'll cost 5, one of each color. A lot of Scarecrows aren't exactly worth playing in Commander, but the Reaper King turns them all into some efficient targeted removal. Our Reaper King deck will focus on enter battlefield synergies to control the board. Since you're in all five colors, you want to have a ramp package to fix your mana so you can get Reaper King out as fast as you can. Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bobble, Farseek, Rampant Growth, Dama's Reach, Cultivate. You know, the usual suspects. If you got Shocks or Duels, Sky Shark Claim can make sure you have enough to get Reaper King out. If you're on a budget, you can run Guild Gates instead and use Secure Dispatch to do the same thing, although it's slower. Chromatic Lantern might be the best rock we could run, as it ramps us and fixes our mana completely. We'll also be running all the Cygnus and have green and blue, as those are going to be our main colors. Wildfield Scarecrow lets us sacrifice it to get two basics to hand, and Scuttle Mud is a 3-drop Scarecrow that can tap for one mana of any color, as well as change the colors of target creature to those of your choosing. In the early game, Wildfield Scarecrow and Scuttle Mud help us fix, but with Reaper King out they become quite dangerous. Some other notable Scarecrows. Scarecrone, who can let you sacrifice another Scarecrow to draw a card. You can also use it to reanimate an artifact creature. Grim Poppet is a 7-drop that enters with 3 minus 1 minus 1 counters on it, and we can remove one of those counters to put it on another creature. With the Flicker utility in our deck, we could use this ability multiple times. This guy gets through things that his boss can't, like creatures with indestructible. Heap Doll is an unassuming 1-drop Scarecrow that can sacrifice itself to exile a card from a graveyard. Normally, a card like this isn't worth running, but the fact that it's a Scarecrow gives it enormous power while Reaper King is out. The Exile ability is a silver bullet against graveyard strategies, allowing you to pick off pesky dredge or reanimator targets. Well that's it for the proper Scarecrows, the Changelings have a close alliance with the Reaper King's gang. Irregular Cohort enters with another Changeling, so that's two things you get to destroy. Graveshifter is a Changeling that gets back into the creature card, and Birthing Bows can create a Changeling for 4 mana. Torian Mahler gets bigger with each spell your opponents cast, and Chameleon Colossus can get really big to finish out games. Unsettled Mariner gives your cards a layer of protection, forcing your opponents to pay 1 more mana to target you or your permanents. Adaptive Automaton and Metallic Mimic are low-costed shapeshifters that can become scarecrows and buff them. Mirror Entity can buff your entire board in addition to the other anthem effects like the one our commander gives. Another category of creatures we'll be looking at are clones. Clones can act as a kill spell by copying one of our scarecrows, and in a pinch, we can copy Reaper King to get a one-off shot of his triggered ability. We can also use them to copy our opponent's best utility and ETB creatures for ourselves. Spark Double and Sakashima the Imposter are our best clones, as we can make non-legendary copies of our Reaper King. This allows us to get Reaper King's Destroy Trigger multiple times for each Scarecrow we play. Stunt Double is a clone to Flash and Dex Duplicate as Haste and Dethrone. Progenitor Mimic is an expensive clone, but makes more copies of itself each turn. It's the Reaper King's Fall Guy, as he almost always takes a kill spell as soon as he enters. Quasi Duplicate lets us make a copy of a creature we control, and then we can jumpstart it by pitching a card we don't need to cast it out of the bin. Rite of Replication can create a token copy of a creature for 4, or 5 copies for 9. If we target Reaper King off the kicker, the original one will see the 5 tokens enter, and those tokens will each see 4. That's 25 triggers of Reaper King's ability. This is why he's wanted on 12 planes. Non-Scarecrows we can use for their ETB value are Solemn Simulacrum Lockroom to Ramp and Mold Drifter to Draw. To really get the most out of our ETB triggers, we'll be running Panharmonicon and Conjurer's Closet. Panharmonicon doubles ETB triggers, which makes our Reaper King work double duty. 
Conjurer's Closet lets us flicker a creature at our end step, most often getting a free trigger for Reaper King in the process. Eldrazi Displacer is one of the best flicker enablers, letting us pay two and a colorless to flicker at instant speed. We can use this to get utility out of our creatures, or to get blockers out of the way. We have to commit to the board to keep the control engine going, so we have a few ways to dodge removal. Eerie Interlude and Ghost Way protect our Scarecrows. On top of that, when they re-enter, they will trigger Reaper King again. To protect Reaper King himself, Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves are classic. Asceticism gives all of our creatures hexproof, and we can even regenerate them if we have to. Paradoxical Outcome is an unusual spell that lets us bounce our non-token permanents to draw cards. We can use this to save our creatures in response to a board wipe, or we can just use it to enable Reaper King's triggers again. You can use those mass flipper spells to decimate your opponent's boards and finish the game by swinging with your Scarecrow army. Living Death lets us do this when we're behind, by swapping the field with the graveyard. Any good cards our opponents get back will just be destroyed if Reaper King is among the living dead we get back. We can use spells like Unburial Rites, Animate Dead, or even Scarecrow's ability to get Reaper King back from the graveyard if he's been removed too many times. For card draw, we've got Padim, Console of Innovation. She lets us draw a card at our upkeep if we have the highest converted mana cost among artifacts on the board. Reaper King's converted mana cost is 10, which will be the highest CMC of artifacts most of the time. Vanquisher's Banner is another anthem for our Scarecrows on top of letting us draw whenever we cast one. Kindred Discovery does something similar, letting us draw when a Scarecrow enters the battlefield. We can use Rishkar's Expertise to draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures we control and then get a free 5 drop. Return of the Wildspeaker lets us draw in the same way for non-humans, or we can use it as a pump at instant speed. Kindred Summons and Kindred Charge let us double our Scarecrows in different ways. Summons lets us pull the next X Scarecrows from our deck, where X is the number of Scarecrows we already have. Charge makes token copies of them, and if Reaper King is that, we'll be getting a ton of triggers again for multiple Reaper Kings. This one is particularly nasty the more clones of Reaper King we have out. Finally, we have Kindred Dominance. The danger of our Scarecrow tribe is that Scarecrows aren't that useful in other decks. Most of the time, Dominance is a one-sided board wipe. Since we're in all five colors, we get to take full advantage of Bring to Light. By putting all five colors into Bring to Light, we get to grab a creature, instant, or sorcery with converted mana cost of five or less and keep it on standby. We could grab anything we need, from finishers like Rite of Replication or utility creatures like Scarecrow. We're also going to use the Shared Summons in Eladomri's Call, which let us grab creatures out of our deck at instant speed. Sometimes, we can't rely on having Reaper King out to remove our opponent's threats. Vandal Blast keeps artifacts in check, Crowsand Grip gives you the ability to stop combos in progress with a split second, Anguish and Making and Utter End let us get rid of any non-land we want, and Negate lets us protect our key spells or stop our opponents. As for lands, we'll be making use of either all the Shocks or Guild Gates with green and blue, whichever you've got. Remember to use Sky Shroud and Claim for Shocks, and Circuit is wrapped for Gates. Command Tower and Path of Ancestry tap for any color, and Path lets you scry if you cast a Scarecrow. Exotic Orchard can tap for any color one of our opponents can tap for. We're also going to be playing the Trilands that have blue and green in them. Cascading Cataracts can also help us filter into Wooburg. Arcane Lighthouse removes Shroud and Hexproof, allowing our Reaper King to target anything with his ability. Reliquary Tower gives us no maximum hand size, Adventure Spare gains us some life, and we can crack it to tutor for an artifact. Finally, we have 6 forests, 5 islands, 4 plains, 2 swamps, and 1 mountain. If you have more expensive lands like Mana Confluence or Fetches, you can of course upgrade your mana base as you see fit. Well, there we have it. How a few draft commons become back alley killers. Next time you take a stroll through the countryside, you better watch your bet. Uh, I, I've been the detective, investigating the decks the other Planeswalkers don't play or won't. Tell me in the comments how you would build the Reaper King. Subscribe to the Thraben Detective Agency for more deck dossiers and case files. You know, throw me, throw me a little like. You know, the uh, rent of my rent of my office isn't isn't cheap. You know, throw me, throw me a little like, be good.